guys, Mixed Duality here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. So last time, we had kind of a frustrating date with Craig. So because of that, I feel like taking my anger out on Brian. So let's go ahead and message him. Debt number 72, the only acceptable time and place for decaf coffee is never and in the trash. Debt tip number two, it's never too late to invest in a personal IRA. Hey, and Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? Oh, I have a message from Brian. Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian, and now he's challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my fishing research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still though, I have to accept. I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish, and my lawn could use another good mowing. That'll show him. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an hour I had previously forgotten existed. <sighs> Man, that's going to be a rough start. Amanda. Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen, eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece like some kind of monster. I didn't raise you like that. What? It's called string cheese, not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Did you just call me in here to criticize my controversial string cheese eating technique? Or what? No, Amanda, we have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went fishing in Girl Scouts, didn't you? Nope. My stint in the Scouts was brief and purely transactional. Thought I could get free cookies, but I didn't know I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff. But I have to beat Brian. Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember how last summer, how I applied for a job at that coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher. During the interview, they asked me if I know how to work an espresso machine. Espresso, oh my god, I can't believe I said espresso. I'm so sorry. An espresso machine. And I really wanted the job, so I lied and said yes. On that first morning, there was a line out the door, and within half an hour, I severely burned my hand, and they told me to go home and never come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. You can lead a horse to water. What do horses have to do with fish and burns? Dad, please, I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay. Brian's just... He just thinks he's so much better than me, and he purposefully reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Hmm. Is that what you think is happening here? No, Amanda. Okay. Gr I know that's what's happening. <sighs> All right, pops. We should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning. Night, Panda. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay. Sleep. I am wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked at mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing pole in one hand and a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say a thing. That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. Oh, the music. I don't understand why, but it feels like my life depends on catching a fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, and wait, and wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness 
as I watch the line disappear into depths below. You use the wrong lure. I look up and see my father, just as he looked that one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all of the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. My boat tips over and I fall into the water, sinking further and further. I see multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. You gotta use a neutral buoyancy lure if you're trying to catch trout, buddy. I jolt awake to the sound of my alarm. Oh, it's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on clothes and get ready. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. <sighs> Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Uh, no. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. Never. Amanda, I'll get up in a minute. All right, Brian should be here in 20, so you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave me away. I leave the room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do words jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. Hop in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Woof, woof. Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let daddy sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. <sighs> you ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So, where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north of here. Little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me there all the time. I don't think anyone else knows about it. I brought everything we need so we can catch some trout, have a nice little fire, and enjoy the nature. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course. It's probably not as nice as it sounds like yours is, though. Right. I am digging a hole here. I stare out at the forest lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusty pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into a bush. After a nice, quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up to a magnificent lake. Well, here we are. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us, barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore, where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake, where he has a canoe waiting. Oh, great. It's still in one piece. Hold on. Help me out with Maxwell. I help Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest onto Maxwell. Woof! Woof! All right. Your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Um, huh. Maybe if I fall in, you can save me. If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Hmm. Suit yourself. <laughs> oh, man. Just giving him more things for him to stroke his ego with. Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. You kids want to fish? Aww. I'm good with just throwing rocks in the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that, water! Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Oh, is that what we're doing? 
And Daisy, don't you want to fish? I think fishing is kind of inhumane. We're going to go explore the woods and look at bugs and stuff. Mm, all right, be safe. Don't go too far. Brian puts the life vest around himself, and we throw all of our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place, looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves into the middle of the lake. Most freshwater fish usually fish at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge, after all. Fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one. Sounds easy enough to me. What's on the line? Besides all the fish I'm going to catch, obviously. I was thinking something a little more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Custody of our children? <laughs> more than that. Let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. The Whackmaster 2000? That's a limited edition. But... If you win, you get my pole saw, the Reach and Cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit. The Reach and Cut 3000 is state of the art. My weed whacker is a prized possession, but there are all those hard-to-reach branches at the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruning. You're on. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. Maybe that's today. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He casts into the lake. Oh boy, now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box and at the pole in my hand. Uh, uh, stretch before physical activity. Because I'm such a pro fisherman, I anticipate a lot of quick physical movements over the course of this fishing session. To prepare for such activities, I will now stretch my body so that it is limber and ready for battle. Oh, I think he just likes checking me out, right? That's very responsible of you. I do a few calf stretches, some bicep pulls, and crack my neck several times. I bend over and try to touch my toes, uh, but I can't just make it happen. I can barely get the tips of my fingers past my shins. My nubile body is now lithe and pliant, perfect for wrangling every trout in this lake with my bare hands. Now what? Um, <laughs> meditate. I close my eyes and relax my muscles. I clear my mind of all thoughts and focus on taking deep, even breaths. What are you doing? I'm meditating. It's an exercise in mindfulness and positive visualization. It often helps me use a calming mantra while I'm meditating. I'm going to kick Brian's ass. I am better than Brian. Brian will never beat me. I am the superior dad, etc. I think I'm ready. Let's cast this sucker. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Uh, sorry. I judged the wind speed wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. <laughs> Go ahead and take my pole. I know it's hard switching to a new pole you're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Brian hands me his pole with a smile, and I just sit there, feeling like an idiot. Dad tip number 54. Have you ever... Okay. Oh, God. Fishing here is fishing here is easy. They group up. All you gotta do is line up three of the same species and reel them in. Okay. I need to match three of the same species? Uh, I can't tell which fish is which. Match that. Okay. Wait, this is the Atlantic salmon. Like most salmon, they swim upstream to spawn. They're among the largest salmon species. Okay, what do I do? Uh. Okay, I see. Um. No, no, no. That's the northern pike, a sport fish that isn't great for eating due to its tough, scaly hide. Some fishermen hunt them with a bow and arrow since their sharp teeth easily cut through the fishing line. Oh god, wait! Ugh. Wait, why isn't it working? That's the walleye. They typically feed at dusk or dawn during rough weather and have better eyesight than most fish. Okay, do I have... Why can't it work? I get it. On my off days, I get a case of same fish too. So wait, I'm confused. Uh, okay, it says I have to line up three of the same type. Uh, 
Wait, why doesn't it work? That's the largemouth bass, a popular sports fish made it infamous by the singing Billy the Bass novelty toy and decoration. It's easily confused with the smallmouth bass. Okay, so I need to be better at this. I need to be more careful about what I'm doing. Cool. Why isn't... Okay, I think I don't understand what to do. That's the bullhead catfish. They're bottom-dwelling invasive species now found worldwide. They taste great fried. Okay, wait. Why can't I... Uh, okay... I don't understand. Did you know the plural of fish is fish? I don't understand what I'm doing. Wait, I get it. On the off days, I get a case of same fish too. Okay, oh god. Um, yeah, I, I really sucked there. B, <laughs> getting there. Good work. Pfft. That wasn't good work. <laughs> I think I understand the game now that it's over. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I will crush him! Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big! The tip of the pole dips down repeatedly and the line starts to run. Is uh, Brian going to have to like reach around my waist or my hand and help me pull it out of the water? <laughs> Reel it in! I finally get the fish lined up right next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. It's all yours. I lean down and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. The pole I saw is mine. All my... The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. Oh, should have worn that life preserver. I should have taken that life vest. All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian's arms. I'm finally dragged upwards, spluttering water. <laughs> All of our gear floats on the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. Okay. You all right? Does that count as one? <laughs> well, seeing as all of our fish now swimming safely back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. <laughs> Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. We row back to shore with Maxwell in tow. Once we get to the beach, Maxwell darts off into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of lake water glisten in the sun across his strong back. <laughs> Man, all that general contracting must have built that guy like an ox. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Oh. I'm going to get a fire going so we can dry off. Want to hand me yours? I, uh, yes, okay. I reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I'd done more sit-ups in my life. Or any sit-ups at all, really. Another thing you've bested me at, stupid sexy Brian. <laughs> stupid sexy Flanders. You might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like it's the only lunch we'll have. The day's young. We can fish from the shore. Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Oh, please don't take them off. Please don't take them off. Brian sets a couple lures by the water's edge. We're probably going to have to put the kibosh on the competition for now. Until another day. My stomach growls. Okay. You hungry? Oh, I'm I'm fine. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola bars. They're going to be soaking wet. I mean, I guess they're covered in uh, tin foil, but I have a small child. I am flush with snacks. Brian joins me by the fire, and I accept the cargo short granola. Ew. Is that a euphemism for something? And now we're back to waiting. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? Ugh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. They're a couple of smart kids. And that's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They've probably established a small rural government by this point and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around the sun, cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm, golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow. Nature is beautiful. Mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks. Here you go, bud. Brian hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh. I've always hated how this stuff smells. Really? I've always kind of liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell comes bounding up to me. A huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks at me expectantly. Uh... 
throw the stick out towards the woods. Oh wow, look at that. He is really a fan of that. I hurl the stick as hard as I can through the tree line. Maxwell bolts after it, running as fast as his stubby little legs can carry him. Which, consequently, is not very fast. It is very cute, though. Ah. Nice throw, Daddy. I turn away so he can't see me blush. Maxwell brings the stick back to me, clearly proud of himself. Good boy, Maxwell. You're a very good and speedy boy. You're the world champ of fetch. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Butt pats never fail. Scratch behind his ear. Rub that belly. Maxwell rolls over and lets me rub his belly. He wiggles on the grass, clearly loving it. I feel like a bit of a third wheel here. Where are my... <laughs> Oh my god. Where are my players? Oh my god, guys. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I'm so flustered I can barely say anything. I just focus on petting Maxwell and hope Brian doesn't notice how much I'm sweating. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish begin routinely pulling on Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whew. Whoa, Dad Bod Patrol. I'm going to have to issue both a citation and demand you both put your shirts on. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head. Thankful I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. My <laughs> God, guys. This is so weird. Okay. Where have you guys been? Studying entomology. What? Huh. We are playing with bugs. Huh. I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for? A child? Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Oh. Right. We take a seat around the fire, and Brian serves us all generous piles of fish on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? Fish taste okay? Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously, mouths full of fish. Oh, it's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Little well, Harding family recipe. Mm -hmm. Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake. And then, and then I accidentally tipped over that boat. Don't worry. All of the gear floated to the surface, so we didn't lose anything. Right, Daddy? I, uh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I can't believe he just covered for me. Gosh, he even out-humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including my world-famous sense of humility. <sighs> we finish our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda and Daisy. They've had a long day. I've been an ordeal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove... I'm the most awake down on the block, but uh, yeah, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window, and the low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. <sighs> uh, hey, sleepyhead. I open my eyes and realize I dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh. Hey, I was, um, resting my eyes. Uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict. So, I'm super awake for it. And ready to fight. With my strong arms. <laughs> it's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse on the couch. Ah, oh, long day. Yep. I was so close to that pole saw. Mm. Pole saw? Yeah. Brian and I were competing to see who could catch the most fish and... Ugh! Stop! Why do you care so much? Amanda Panda, just look at the guy. He's so obviously got my number and he's rubbing my face in it. Uh. Dad, I love you, but you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb? Or clearly the superior dad? 
you know what? I don't have any of the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I am a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Night, Pops. Debt tip number 34. Peter Weller actually... Okay, we've read that so many times. Okay, well, that was actually kind of cute. And... See, now I'm kind of being convinced that maybe Ryan isn't such a bad guy. Maybe it's all in Daddy Issues' head. Ah, oh, come on. Don't make me... Don't make me feel this way, game. <sighs> okay, well, I need to rethink my perspective on life and the world. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to leave this part right here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you all again very soon. <laughs> Bye.